Hi to all my Substack subscribers, followers, fans. This is day one of uh, my trek along Hadrian's Wall. I've left the Roman town of Corbridge and going along a main road at the moment, looking out for cars and heading towards a place called Cholliford. What I'm actually doing at the moment is rejoining the wall from Corbridge. So I have to go up a few side streets, as it were, in the British countryside, and then join something called Military Road, which takes you along what was the path of the wall. And hopefully later, we're actually going to see bits of the wall itself. So stick around. So I've just been to the Errington Cafe, which is uh, the last stop, as it were, before you, you hit the wall proper. So there's nothing much actually to see here. The wall's been well and truly plundered along this uh, route, uh, part of the, part of the uh, route here. But um, as we get further along, we will see bits of the wall. But nevertheless, at the moment, we do have evidence there of a Roman ditch and then as you can see rising up the Roman earthworks so they were here the Romans were here it's walking through terrain like this wooded terrain like this that you can almost feel what, how terrifying it would have been for Roman legionaries from all over the empire to come to this kind of forbidding terrain, whether in Britain or of course in Germany, where uh, there was a huge massacre of Roman soldiers in the Teutonberg forest. But uh, you can imagine Roman soldiers tramping through terrain like this, wondering, what barbarian menace was lurking behind the trees waiting to attack them uh, in the kind of terrain that they didn't operate best in you know they like to they like to get into formation on nice flat tidy terrain but uh, anyway this is a change of backdrop for this part of the uh, the walk along where the wall once stood uh, must must say there isn't much of the wall around here um, but we are following the exact line of where the wall once stood. So you get a very clear idea of the wall here because I'm walking along the wall here and then to my left here you can see a very definite ditch and uh, there we are, can you see that there? That's been on our side for a while now and then a kind of a kind of rampart there further along but this ditch is very very clearly defined now and survived 2000 years if you believe the accounts of the venerable bead one of the foremost historians of what used to be termed the Dark Ages, then a huge battle was fought here on the site of this church, which led to the conversion of Northumbria to Christianity, although plenty of people have picked holes in that story. Thing you can be pretty sure about with regards to this church which has been standing here for um, you know well over a thousand years well let's do the maths actually it's been here for 1500 years uh, is that plenty of the stones in that building there came from Hadrian's wall
well a moment of excitement because after five six hours of walking uh, here is the first bit of full-on no doubt about it Roman wall um, so just here in a piece of countryside that is a genuine 2,000 year old piece of Hadrian's wall What's really interesting here is you can see an example of Roman cost effectiveness and they, they never missed a trick on that. If you notice there is a foundation for the wall. There you've got the wall there. But what's happened is they've built the foundation there and then round about here, if you can see, they decided, oh God, we don't need the wall to be that wide and they've narrowed it. And this is, this is well recognized. So basically at this point, they decided they didn't need the wall to be as thick as they planned. So you can still see the foundation there, but then the wall there is no so slimmer and it continues at, uh, at that width all the way for the rest of the, uh, for the rest of the distance. So it's a classic example of Roman budgeting, cost effectiveness, call it what you want. It's thanks to a, a amateur historian uh, of the early 19th century, William Hutton, that this bit of the Roman wall here even survives because when he arrived here and he was walking the wall from end to end, he discovered that a local landowner, and I'm suspecting it's this house over here, was taking the stone from here and using it to construct um, a, a, a nearby home. And he begged the local landowner to stop doing that and to let this part of the wall survive. So that's the only reason that this part of the wall here is even with us today. All along the route, uh, you can see here, along here, behind me here, that uh, there are farm walls that, uh, as I said, look suspiciously like they may have been uh, created with stones from the Roman wall. Anyway, even though the Roman wall isn't, uh, doesn't appear for large stretches of the route, it's nevertheless a very beautiful environment to, to walk along. I mean, just look at the view behind me here and you can hear a babbling brook in the background there. <laughs> 